that away and combined it together and you'll get a better understanding if you combine both chapters together like it was originally written there. So let's read in chapter 5 of Hebrews, verse 11. It says, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now you got to realize that they were dull of hearing that he was writing to, they were still newborn babes. They act like they was newborn babes. And they was harping over certain things. I believe that Paul was writing this because he was trying to bring them to understanding. And they must have uh, was practicing stuff that a newborn babe was practicing. They should have been a little more advanced in the Lord by now. And Paul was sort of getting on to them in a good way. He wasn't real mad at them or nothing like that, but he was he was sort of writing to try to teach them to because they was practicing probably the wrong thing about, you know, laboring to enter in, they was putting works there. But they wasn't mixing it with faith. And that's what Paul was trying to drive home to them. So he says in verse twelve, for whom for the time ye ought to be teachers. That's how most Christians are today. They ought to be teachers by now. They ought to be not experts in the Scripture, but they ought to be a lot more advanced than they are. But they're dull of hearing. They don't apply themselves. They don't love the Word of God like they should. They straddle the fence. She says, for Paul said, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. I mean, you have need that somebody teach you the basics of Christ. You should already know the basics of Christ. He says, And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. You're unskillful if you... If you're not applying yourself as a Christian, if you're not studying and praying and, and trying to advance yourself in the Lord, trying to get closer to God, you're not going to learn like you need to. You're going to stunt your growth, and you're going to be uh, like a, in a newborn babe situation the whole Christian life right there. You're never going to advance. And there is Christians like that that never study. They ain't never hardly learn nothing about the Bible. They learn some, but they've not really applied themselves. They've not learned it like they need to right here. And that's what he was talking to these people about. He says for in verse 4, But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. Now he was trying to tell them, Hey, you're still on this light stuff. You, I mean, you're, you're harping about, Yeah, I got to keep the law. Yes, I got to, uh, you know, be circumcised to be saved. The works-based type salvation, stuff like that. And and Paul said, I done been through this with the Galatians right there. And it grieved him to death that things were going on in Galatia, you know, in the Galatian churches right there. So it's grieving him right here. And he's trying to show forth different things in the book of Hebrews. The Bible says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses Exercise to discern both good and evil. You're supposed to exercise your senses to discern both good and evil. First of all, you ought to study to show yourself approved unto God, but you ought to study to, so you won't be so ignorant about God's Word. You won't be so ignorant and easily persuaded by some false prophet that comes along that tries to break out the law and says, hey, you got to keep the law of Moses. you got to be circumcised. You know, and things like that. Or you got to work your way to heaven. Yes, you're saved by grace, but you got to keep yourself saved. You know, Hebrews, do, Hebrews does not teach us that you got to, yes, saved by grace, but you got to keep yourself saved. No, grace is what saved us. Our faith is what saved us, and our faith is what's going to keep us right there. It's plain and simple as that. They don't give us a license just to live the way we want to. The Bible says we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're supposed to work after we're saved, but we're working because we 
are saved because we love the Lord. We want to please God. We want to please our Heavenly Father. And if we'll live for Him and love Him, He'll bless us. He'll have mercy upon us and He'll fellowship with us. But we're not working to keep ourselves saved, to keep ourselves clean. It's not by works. It's not a works-based salvation. It's a free gift of God. You need to get that to your thick skull. It's plain and simple as that. Some people's, some Christians' skull is so thick. My Lord, you need to get the flesh out of the way. And that's what Paul was trying to say also right here. So let's look at this. It says, now you got to put, uh, chapter five and chapter six, you got to merge them together right here and take out the, the chapter six word up there. And he's talking about exactly the same thing. He said, therefore, leaving the principles of God, he said, yeah, I just got on to you and showed you that you were still babe. He said, therefore, leaving the principles of doctrines of Christ and let us go on to perfection. Let us get closer to the Lord. Let us learn Deeper things than the Lord is what he's trying to say. He's saying you're still like little babes. You're harping over these things right here. He says, not laying again the fa- the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. And people cannot get over that. You know what I mean? They can't get past the, yeah, I got saved. And that's about as far as they get with the Lord. He said, lay it aside right there. Let's don't lay it again. You know what I mean? You're, you're so worried about, yeah, I got to get saved again. I, I fell out of God's will. I got to go get back saved again. There's people that believe that type of stuff. That ain't Bible right there. And that ain't what this scripture is saying right here. He said, let's get past that. Let's get past that and go on northward and go on to perfection in Christ and learn deeper things like this. He said, of the doctrines of baptisms... That S means there's one, one, there's more than one baptisms mentioned in the Bible. There's a deep study on baptism in the Bible, and Paul was talking about that. And of laying on of hands, there's a deeper study right there. And of the resurrection of the dead, there's a deeper study right there. There's a more advanced study. And of eternal judgment. And I believe you ought to study those deep things and get more advanced in those types of things. But you may better help somebody. And I believe you just need to stay with the Bible, love the Bible, eat the Bible up, want the Bible right there, instead of going to a bunch of commentaries and, and running after men, folk that, you know, scholars or so-called, whatever. Just get in the Bible for yourself right there. And, and the Bible says in verse 3, And this we will do if God permits, for it is impossible. Notice the word impossible. He's he's saying, you're about to make me pull my hair out. He said, it's impossible for you if you've been enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and made partakers of of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. He says it's impossible if you've already been saved to renew yourself again to repentance. He was getting on to them. He said, I'm, I'm tired of the Galatians getting uh, beat down by the law. I'm tired of these Hebrews getting beat down the law. And I'm tired of them going to flip in uh, uh, Thessalonians and different churches that he was establishing and they was coming in and teaching a false doctrine about, yeah, let's go back to law, Moses. You got to do this to be saved, like in Acts chapter 15, things like that. I mean, this is probably making Paul about pull his hair out. And he even said in one statement, says, I wish they was even cut off that taught y'all and deceived y'all and bewitched y'all. I wish they was cut off right there it just grieved him so much right there and that's what he was trying to say right here he's like y'all need to go on perfection it's impossible to get saved again lose your salvation one day and then get saved again he said let's read this verse four for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, 
to renew them again unto repentance. So he says, it was impossible for you to get saved twice. That's what he's saying. Let's just pause there. Let's think about this. It's impossible you get saved twice. So get over it. You know what I mean? <laughs> get over it. Get past this right here. It's impossible for you to renew them again in repentance. Seeing you crucify the Son of God afresh. What you going to do? Crucify Jesus again? Jesus was crucified one time. And our salvation is once and for all. He's perfected our spirits right there. Perfected us. When you're perfected, that means you don't make a mistake. That means he saved our soul and made it perfect on the inside. Plain and simple as that. You need to realize that right there. Jesus perfected my soul. He, I got God in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. He put his Holy Spirit there and he sealed it with his Holy Spirit. The devil can't get in. Sin can't get in my soul. I mean, the, nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our lovely Lord. Think about it. And that is exactly what he's telling the Hebrews right here. If you just look at it real closely, I tell you, your eyes will be enlightened and you'll have a better salvation if you know you got eternal life. I know I got eternal life. That don't give me a license to do what I want. That's what they try to accuse us. Oh, you just you could just do what in the world you want if you believe like that. No. When you get saved, this is what you don't understand. When you get saved, you don't want to do those things anymore because you had your nature changed. This ain't a license to sin. If you, if you think like that, you need to get saved. Because when you get saved, you don't want to sin. You will sin in the flesh. That's why he said you got to go and confess your sins and forsake them. Right there, get close to me. You know what I mean? We got a long ways to go. But in our soul, we're perfected. We're sealed. Sin can't get in or in. I can make a mess of my flesh and shame the Lord. I can. But I cannot lose my salvation. It's impossible to get saved twice. Some people say, I've been saved two times. I've been saved three times. Impossible is what the Bible says. I'm taking it as it is. I'm not taking about somebody taught me right there. I'm taking it as it is, as it's written right there. It keeps me out of trouble. And then he began to say some more things, and it's the same thing he's saying. This whole chapter is lining right up to what he just said right there. So let's read it. He says, For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh often upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, Met for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth the blessing from the Lord. What is that? Why did he say that right there? But he, why he said that right there is, hey, if you're a Christian, if you'll live right, I'll bless you. It's sort of like Hebrews. You got the wood, hay, and the stubble. Then you got the gold, the precious things, the silver, the, the beautiful stones. These, this right here in verse 7 is the beautiful stones. It's the beautiful, precious metals right there. That's our good works after we're saved. He said this is what it means when you're saved and, and you get out of the will of God or you do good after you're saved. You don't get unsaved, but God blesses you. God rewards you and he'll reward you in heaven and he'll reward you down here also. And he'll fellowship when you when you do right, when you fulfill verse 7. And then he goes on down to verse 8. But that which bear thorns and briars is rejected as nay unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Wow. Is he talking about burning in hell? No. Think about this. That's wood, hay, and stubble. We, he said those things are going to be thrown in the fire, and it's going to burn up. In other words, if you put gold and silver in the fire, all the dross is burned out of there. And it comes out pure right there. So some of our works are going to go up in smoke. Those things we performed in the flesh that, that wasn't of the Lord after we've been saved, those are going to be, and then we're going to lose our rewards too. That, that'll hinder the rewards that God has got for us. So he's, he's still going back to verse uh, 
6 again and verse 4 again. He's preferring back to that. He's trying to show them a little deeper understanding about, look, here's what happens after you're a Christian. You don't lose your salvation. Your works go up in smoke if you don't, you know, if you don't live right. And you got to compare it with 1 Corinthians chapter thir- uh, 3 right there. You reap what you sow. It's plain and simple. It says in verse 9, But beloved, we are partakers. But beloved, that means you're saved. We are persuaded better things of you. It says, you Christians, we want you to advance in the Lord. Leave this uh, alone where some let somebody come and persuade you that you can get unsaved, that you got to get saved again because you you didn't do this right or do that right, or are you in order to be saved, you got to do it some other way than what Christ says. You know what I mean? He said we're persuaded better things of you. We have confidence that you're going to get past this and you're going to leave this uh, foolishness alone, right there. You know what I mean? Paul constantly had a deal with the Israelites. And they always had trouble with them, but there was some that got saved. Some that got saved. But he had to put up with this on all the churches that he established. There, Here these Judaizers come and try to take over the church and, and di- teach different false doctrines. And it confused the people because you got to realize that this was a time where there was new Christians all around. This new doctrine, this new Christian all around and when you're a new Christian, you're an easy target for the devil to come in with a false doctrine and teach you different things. How do you think we got so many different denominations out there? When people first start out, they got their own little thing about them. You know what I mean? The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. The problem is with most Christians, they don't never get still before the Lord. They don't get still enough. They let some man teach them. And it, that's a good thing if he's a good teacher and he's teaching it straight out of the Bible and he's straight in line and the Holy Spirit's using him. That's a good thing. But most of the time, that's not the case. And they get these ideas in their mind. I used to say so many stupid things. When I first got saved, I used to misinterpret the Bible all over the place when I first got saved, you know. I mean, there's a lot God fed me, but, you know, I was just ignorant. I was a newborn babe in Christ and I was saying stupid things, doing stupid stuff. You know, thinking I was doing the right thing. <laughs> but God taught me otherwise. And I constantly had to pray, Lord, give me wisdom. I've been, I've been saved since I was 20 years old. I'm nearly 50 years old now. And I still have to cry out for wisdom. Lord, show me those things that I don't understand. Those things that I don't see. Lord, show me those secret sins. Lord, advance me in the Lord. Help me to grow up in Christ. I, I'm... I believe when I'm 90 years old, if I live to be that old, that I'll still be (laughs) saying that prayer to the Lord. As long as I'm in this human body, there's always room to grow right there. But there's one thing the Lord let me grow in is this subject about salvation. You know what I mean? And you ought to know it too. You ought to know it too. It's plain and simple as that. You ought to know it too. You ought to go on northward. And we're persuaded of better things than you. He's talking about to the Christians right there. He said, "Go grow up right there. We're persuaded of better things than you. And I believe right here that this is the Philippian church. And if there's Hebrews in this church, he didn't write this just for the Hebrews. He wrote this for all of us to learn from right there. And I, it was possibly Paul that wrote this book. I don't know why people would say any different as you know, is there any clue that anybody else wrote it? But there's so many clues that Paul wrote it. Just because he didn't address it like he normally do, this ain't this ain't your normal, typical book that Paul wrote right here. It says Hebrews right there, right? You think about that. But who, what church did he actually send this letter to? All the clues point to the Philippian church. You automatically think, oh, this is a church in Jerusalem. Where's them clues at? He's not writing to the 12 disciples because he excludes them. I think it's in the third chapter, fourth chapter. He excludes them. So he's not writing to them. And the Holy Spirit's given to me anyway. So, you know, I'm fully persuaded about this thing. He wrote it to the Philippians 
there's probably a bunch of Hebrews there, and they was probably trying to say, hey, you know, this Paul, I don't know, you know. They're trying to teach him the law of Moses again. So he went through that. Paul had a lot of understanding. But the Philippians, they, they followed the Lord, but they was not real smart in the Bible. You know what I mean? They weren't advanced in the Lord. But they was real obedient. They was eager to do God's will. If you if you look over there at the book of Philippians, you'll see what I'm talking about. He loved that church. And that church loved him. And they supported him financially more than anybody. And matter of fact, he said, you only. You of Macedonia supported me. You only. Right there. Once again, you come and supported me. And you put those types of clues together. And you realize that he's writing to the Philippians. Just because it don't say Philippians up there. Then you look over there and the last chapter says, you know, Timothy's let loose. <laughs> Timothy's let loose. He's come up shortly. And then you compare it to the things that he's saying in Philippians. And he'll come up with the understanding. I mean, it's just little clues all through there like that. I didn't know I was going to get in all that. But, you know, it's good to see this as Hebrews. But he was really writing to Philippians. But he wanted this letter to go out. He might have he might have had many copies wrote of this and sent them out, you know. I don't know for sure. I I I can only speculate on that part, but the, what the clues point to is this the Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians again a little later, I believe it was, than the book of Philippians also. They asked certain questions. Most of Paul's writings were wrote because something was going on in the church that stirred Paul up. He heard a report. That's why he wrote Corinthians. Some lady brought him a report of things that was going on in Corinth right there. So Paul writes the letter, and he was stirred up when he was writing uh, 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 he, uh, Corinthians. He was stirred up. He was getting on to them. He was trying to set them straight. And when he was writing this, he was sort of trying to set them straight. But, you know, he was a little more nicer right here than he was to the Corinthians because the Corinthians— they they were all together. They were just you know they had a lot of problems, but the Philippians didn't. He loved the Philippians and the, he loved the Corinthians also, but they they followed the Philippians followed a little more closer than the Corinthians. But at the same time, the Philippians had problems too. You know that's why Paul said you're you're like newborn babes right there. You're dull of hearing. You know I want to teach you meat, but I you know. <laughs> But I tell you what, this was meat right here. This book right here was meat. But some people might argue that point and say, oh, he's talking to a church in Jerusalem. Where is the clues? Think about that. I didn't know how I was going to get in all that, but I appreciate that. You just go look it up yourself. You get deep in Paul's writing, you'll see things like that. It ain't just one or two clues. There's clues all in it. You just got to slow down, be still, and know that he is God right there. Go on to perfection. Get closer. Learn them doctrines right there. How do you think we got so many different denominations out there? And we got so many different kinds of Baptists out there. Also, not just one kind of Baptist, many different kinds of Baptists. Because people get ideas in their mind and they just go on down the road with it, you know. They don't realize they just overstepped God and kept on going. But you know what? When you got the right doctrine, you feel God bringing it out. You feel the Lord bringing it out. The Lord is not a motion of the flesh. The Lord's in our spirit, and you feel a presence, a power that comes out of you that blows through you right there. He said, I'll blow on it. I'll bless it, and I'll blow on it. I'll blow the trumpet through you. Y'all see what he said about John and James? He said, these are the sons of thunder. What do you think he meant right there? The power of God's going to come on them. And when they come around, it's just like thunder. Just like thunder right there. Tag team brothers right there. Preaching the word. It's like thunder. And that's not what you ought to get. You ought to go in perfection. And when you get up, the power of God should be upon you. And it's like thunder. You know what I mean? You think about that. But I hope you'll take and ponder over some of the things I said. Don't go back and, and say, no, he don't know what he's talking about. You know what I mean? I read in a book, professor taught me this. I read this commentary on this. You need to, you need to quit reading commentaries and, and 
quick run into the professors. This is the great professor right here. This is the only potentate. That's Jesus Christ. This is the only authority. Go back to this Bible right here. Love this Bible. Cling to this Bible. Wrap it upon your neck right there. And if your pastor's a man of God and, and, and God's using him, listen to him. Listen to him. But always, when there's things in the Bible that you're not for sure of, you need to go research it yourself. You know what I mean? Find it for yourself. Let it be personal to you. You know, your pastor studied and he, the Lord taught him some things, but you need to let this stuff be personal to you also. So you need to search it deeply as silver and gold. The Bible said if you search the Word of God, 